Hey there guys, welcome to Stanley Chess. I just played in an over the board tournament. It was a Michigan versus Ohio themed tournament uh, and Michigan came out on top, got to represent, and I went undefeated. I won all four games. Uh, two of them were pretty easy wins. I was paired against some lower rated opponents, but I did beat an 1800 and a 1700 in some pretty exciting games. So let's check it out. First game here, we have uh, the black pieces and I'm playing a 500. So, yeah, we'll see how the game goes. Uh, E4, nothing against 500s, it's just that, you know, they're beginner players. So I take the, the pawn here in the center after the Karl Khan. We have a Tartikauer variation. Uh, well, kind of. It leads up to the Tartikauer, if this, this. Uh, but instead, we have Bishop D3. And, you know, I just keep developing my bishop here to g4, and that's what I meant when I said we're playing a 500. Uh, on move 6, he plays c3, and that's just a free bishop. That is a free bishop on d3, and from this point forward, I was like, okay, good start to the tournament. Let's get the game going. So I take the bishop, knight takes f6, okay, we trade some pieces, happy to do that, develop my bishop, check, trade the queens, I don't care. At this point, I'm thinking, all right. I'm up a piece, let's just take advantage of the weak position of the king in the center of the board, give a check here, kick the king away, drop the bishop back, I was under attack, and we'll just try and trade off all the pieces and start some kind of attack on the king, so I give a check, force the king back, and now the bishops are just laser beaming over here on the queen side, just kicking the king all the way back. The king has no legal moves. If I were able to get a knight somewhere, like on c2, you know, magically jump my knight from, <laughs> from b8 to c2, that would be checkmate. There's no legal moves for the king. It's kind of fun. So I develop my knight to a6, the best, best move. You know, I've got to get all my pieces into the game in order to get something going. And, you know, knight h4 just hitting my bishop. I decide to be a little annoying, keep my bishop right in his face here. And g3, apparently the best move here, which I thought about playing, but I didn't, uh, is rook e2. Rook e2 just, you know, allowing this to win the bishop on b2. And the reason I didn't go for this is because I thought my dark squared bishop was a heck of a lot better than his, right? His dark squared bishop is a tall pawn and mine is actually doing a very good job. I figured I would be able to, you know, keep it in the game and I would want that piece on the board. Now, of course, what I played is totally fine, but looking at the variation here, rookie two takes takes and the point is that you just completely ruin, like absolutely obliterate the pawn structure on the king side. And black just cannot do anything. The king is stuck and there's literally nothing black can do. They can try and keep my rook from coming to the open file. I'm just going to take the pawn. They can bring their other rook. Okay, I'm going to take this pawn. I'm going to kick the knight, take that pawn. Like this is how the game would have gone. I would have been six points up in material, a piece and three pawns, and it would have been pretty easy going. But, you know, I just play bishop d6, keep it simple, you know, trade the rooks, bring my other rook with check, and here I say, okay, similar idea, we're gonna let him take one of my bishops to win the bishop on b2, and you know, the knight comes out to f5, don't really care, I just drop my bishop back temporarily, because I get to kick the knight back, and here I just play knight back to c7, trying to get into d5 here, which I do, and I win the pawn on f2. And then now it's just going to be a game where I pick off all of his pawns, start pushing mine, make a queen, and checkmate him. And here, you know, plays c4, just there's not much white can do, right? So white just starts pushing pawns, and here blunders a uh, skewer of the king and the rook on this dark square diagonal. So I win the rook for f absolutely free. And here, you know, I just decide, okay, let's just take his last piece off the board, because I'm still completely winning, I've got two pieces, right, to nothing, and I just start pushing pawns, pushing pawns, pushing pawns, and I make a queen, give a couple of checks, and it's checkmate. So pretty good game there, not too bad, a uh, nice easy start to the tournament for me, and I'm feeling good, right? I, I take it, I'm walking around, watching all the other games, getting some water, and I get paired for my next game against an 1800 
which uh, kind of had me quaking in my boots a little bit, because the last tournament that I played in was about a year or so ago, and I got paired against like 1900s every single round, and I was like, man, this sucks! I was losing every game just getting crushed by like 12 year olds, and it was just not a great time. I, I didn't even play the last round of that tournament. I felt so bad, and I just, you know, said, hey, I'm, I'm not gonna play this round, uh, I'm gonna head out. Uh, I, of course, let the director know, so I'm not gonna, like, ruin somebody else's match, but anyway, I'm playing against this 1820, I have the white pieces, which, you know, has me feeling a little hopeful, and let's see how it goes. We have e4, e5, knight c3, knight f6. We get a Vienna Gambit. Let's go. Now, the good thing about playing the Vienna Gambit with white is that usually black doesn't know what they're doing past, you know, a few moves. You, now, sometimes you at a lower level you might get takes, and this is just losing for black, uh, pretty much, you know, the knight has to go all the way back, and, you know, you get a beautiful center, not right away. Uh, you want to play knight f3 to prevent any queen h4 stuff. But, anyway, uh, the main line here, the main move is d5. Takes, takes, and I play queen f3. Now here, I think he already didn't really know what what to do. Uh, well, actually, that's a lie. I, I say that because when I played queen f3, my opponent kind of looked at the board and went, hmm. And to me, I thought, okay, all right, we got him a little bit on the ropes here, you know? Maybe he's feeling a little nervous. My queen's coming out. He's not too familiar with this opening. So he takes, takes. This is fine. Queen h4. And he kind of kills the game. Right, g3 and queen e4. And he told me after the game, he's like, yeah, when I see this, I just like to get the queens off the board with queen h4. And I'm like, okay, yeah, fair enough. I played d4, and here I was expecting on passant. I was expecting on passant, and I was going to play d4 at some point and get this center. I was a little worried about it being a bit flimsy and, you know, overextended, but, you know, I've got the big center, and I'm going to develop my pieces, bishop out, knight out somewhere maybe castle, get my rook to the open files, and, you know, support the pawns, and we're gonna have a game, right? Uh, here, computer says c5 to prevent d4, and if you play d4, then, you know, like I said, a bit overextended. You know, the bishop comes out with check, and your king is stuck in the center, you know, like, try and pin the knight, bring your knight, and it's like, all your pieces are loose, and you're trying to hang on here, castles, and I'm a bit worried about, you know, my king stuck in the center of the board, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, here it even says uh, black has a slight edge. Uh, so you shouldn't play d4 if c5. Instead, you should play, uh, sorry, like, bishop e3 to prepare d5, perhaps, and, you know, bishop out, bishop out, you know, knight, and then once you have some pieces into the game, you can play d4, because the difference here is that your king's not stuck in the center of the board, right, not stuck in the center, and you've actually got pieces out already, and the bishops, right, and, and now you actually have a good position, right? The king still has to castle, and you're gonna, you know, bring your rooks to the open files, or to support the pawns, and you're gonna push. You have a pass pawn. Not not a bad thing. But alas, that didn't happen. Instead of en passant, we have bishop e7. Bishop e7 for my opponent, which is quite interesting. Because uh, I play rook b1, and here I thought, I think I'm doing pretty well. Because I, you know, oh, let's, uh, let's go back to rook b1. I induce a weakness, right? b6, now the light squared diagonal is mine for the taking, right? The pawn is now completely pinned because of the rook and I'm gonna attack this pawn. The bishop comes out, right? My rook is very active on the uh, semi-open b-file. I've got this beautiful center. This pawn is just a liability for black. I'm gonna keep piling up on it, win that pawn, and just have a great time. So I bring my knight out, right? He brings his, and g4. I find this nice idea. It's not the best move, but it's still uh, good, good for white. The idea is this, right? You take, take, and the knight is hanging. You have to go back to, to defend it, pretty much. And then rook g1, right? And I don't care about bishop h4. I really don't. I can just play king d2, king d1 even, and, you know, to keep my bishop, uh, you know, open here on the diagonal. And yeah, I gotta play g6. And let me tell you, playing g6 and b6 like this when you don't even have the fianchetto going on and that, oh man, these dark squares, if I can get a knight in there somehow, uh, like if I can play knight g3 at some point, maybe bishop back and get my knight to f6, that would be beautiful. And also, don't forget, I can play bishop h6 and prevent you from castling this way. You've got to castle long, and 
Yeah, I mean, you got something like this going, uh, maybe not right away, but you know, you get what I'm saying. You control the dark squares over there and you've still got the beautiful center and that just looks really good. Um, but we go back, black doesn't take, instead plays bishop h4 check right away. I block with the knight, the bishop goes back, I castle. I accept the fact that my pawn structure is going to get ruined in front of my king, but I don't care. Why do I not care? I've got this, I've got that. I've got, I've got this, hold on, I've got this, I've got that, I've got this, uh, I've got the beautiful center, I'm gonna play, you know, bishop d2 maybe, and bring the rook, and I'm gonna win the pawn, and it's just gonna be a good time, uh, and I just really like this position for white. So long castles, bishop g5. At this point, I'm starting to feel good, I'm starting to feel good, especially after this. Uh, I was expecting like rook, rook to e8, or maybe rook d7, something like that, but then rook f8, you know? And I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. I saw rook f8 and I thought, okay, I think I'm better. I think I'm actually like a, a lot better. I, again, I've got the center. This pawn's gonna fall after this, right? I bring the rook over to e1 and how are you defending this pawn? You can't play this because of on passant and I'm still attacking the pawn, right? And you can't do this because of bishop takes f6, right? And this is just not gonna work out for you. I mean, I just win the pawn here, right? Bishop e4, rook e4, and I've got some passed pawns, the rook defense. I'm gonna just have a good time here, right? I can maybe double, but anyway, that doesn't happen. Instead, we have a, uh, h6 first, and I find this nice idea of bishop c1. Because here you think, uh, okay, I've got to retreat my bishop somewhere. It's under attack. Where do I retreat it to? Uh, well, I've got, you know, here, but I don't want to block the rook. I've got here, but I don't want to block the rook. I've got here to defend this pawn, but it's not really under attack, and I don't really have to defend that pawn, and my bishop's going to be pretty passive on this square. So let's go bishop c1, because I want to be able to get to this diagonal. And <laughs> little do you know, f6, and I'm pretty much winning. I'm pretty much winning after f6. The idea was to chip away at my center, right? Maybe try and trade the pieces and go after my weaknesses here. But bishop a3. You can't play this because of e6. And you can't go here. I mean, computer says that's what you have to play pretty much and sacrifice the exchange. But even then, c4, d5. I'm still going to win this pawn. And good luck, right? These This past pawn ain't going anywhere. But instead, we have this, rook to e8, and takes. Now, you can't take back because of rook f6. And that was really nice. I saw that when I played bishop a3. I thought, okay, rook out, takes, takes. Ooh, bishop f6. And it's a fork. Look at that. If you take, rook f6 is a fork of the bishop and the knight. There's no way to defend both. You go here, I take you and then take the bishop. There's just nothing. The bishop can't go here, right? And it can't go back to defend the knight. There's just, it's a fork, plain and simple. So you have to give up another pawn. The knight goes back, takes, and this is just terrifying for black. Now here, apparently, bishop h3 is the best move to set up a discovery on the king, kind of force the king to move away, but you still play g5. You have to get the bishop active. That's the point. You have to get the bishop active so that if they take you, then you can play bishop d7, hit the rook, and the rook is trapped. The rook is trapped. There are no safe squares for the rook. So you have to take, sacrifice the exchange, but then it's even worse because of rook to f8 and you're attacking this and this. It's like a skewer of the pieces. You have to play bishop a4 and just give up the knight for free. And then just rook e4. Like you're just down a piece and a bunch of pawns. Like this is just terrible for black. Now I did not find that idea. Instead, what I do is I play bishop f8, which is still good, defends the bishop and the pawn, right? And knight e6. Here, I also don't find the best move. The best move is to just take this pawn, trade, trade. And I didn't like it because of this. I didn't like the fact that I would have to, you know, trade everything off here, but I, I didn't calculate it correctly. And by that, I mean, I didn't count the material in my head correctly. I thought I would only be up one pawn, uh, but... In fact, hold on, I'm getting a phone call. Uh, I'm gonna have to, oh, uh, hold on. <laughs>
Hello, I'm recording a video. Oh no! Oh my god! Get back to it! I, I shall. To okay, I'll see you when you get home. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. That was my girlfriend. Anyway, uh, here I didn't ca count the material correctly in this position. I thought I was only up one pawn, but I'm up two. And I can just play king f2, uh, bishop f4, uh, you know, defend the pawn, and I'm just going to slowly but surely, you know, bring my rook active, bring my king, and, and march the pawns up the board. I didn't see this uh, idea, though. Bishop e7, which is pretty nice. You sever the connection so you don't have to get all those trades right away. And then you can set up this discovery, right? So that after check, you win this pawn and just go back. And now you're up three pawns and doing very well. I didn't see that. Uh, so instead, what I do is I play rook f6 so that after this, 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 and this... I'm up two pawns in a rook endgame. Computer says this is a flat draw. However, practically, for like people under 2,000, you know, think, think about it. Like he's 1,800. My over the board rating is 1,321 at this point because I've only played in a handful of tournaments. And yeah, it's just, it's not that easy to draw with black in my opinion. So I, I play, or he plays king d7, king g2. Bring my king, defend the pawns. Offer a rook trade. If he takes, that's just going to be winning for me. So he doesn't. He goes rook e8. I play king f3, right? I played the rook here so that I could shield my king, defend these squares, right? And just try and slowly march things up the board. Now rook e6, uh, I play c4. Top move here, just preventing the king from getting in. Because you don't want to allow this, this, and this, right? And you just don't want to allow any of that because then he gets some play over here with the pawns. So c4 prevents the king from getting in. King back, blunder. Immediately blunder. Uh, immediately blunder. That's not grammatically correct. Immediately blunders, there you go. And the reason that's a blunder is because of rook e4. Rook e4 forces the trade of rooks, and now I'm just completely winning in the end game. Two pawns up, king and pawn end game, let's go. King e6, you know, d5. If you go here, then I'm gonna go this way, and I am just going to win this pawn and push. And you're not going to be able to stop me. He goes the other way. So I take the opposition. He goes here. And now it's just, uh, I had to calculate here, of course, um, to make sure that it's winning. It is. I calculated king e5, king g5, king e6, king takes g4, king, king d7, king takes g3, king takes c7, h5, d6, h4, d7, h3, d8, h2, but you made a queen already and you can just stop the pawn and that's as far as you need to see because at that point your king is already in black's territory. You can win these pawns and push your other pawn and make a new queen and that's what happens. So king e5 and we get all of that on the board. I queen. Yeah, I play a couple of checks, take the pawn, and he resigns here. Because if you take, like I said, I'm just going to go here and win all the pawns. And hopefully you can see that this is winning. So a very nice win for the second round of the tournament. I'm feeling good. I'm terrified for the next round. Because I'm like, if I'm playing an 1800 on round two, who am I playing on round three? Right? Now, because it was like a Michigan versus Ohio themed tournament, uh, they set it up so that Michigan people would only play people from Ohio. Uh, in order to keep the rivalry, you know? Uh, so I didn't play any of the strong players from Michigan. If I had, I probably would have lost a game or two, right? Uh, because there were some pretty strong players from Michigan. Uh, instead, I play a 1700 on round three. A 1700 with the white pieces, and we have an Elohim's defense. Which I don't know. I, I've never really studied this opening. I know the first like 10 moves or so because they're like pretty natural in force. You just take the center and kick the knight around a whole bunch. And I figure white is better, right? Because how could you not be? The problem is against the 1700, he's got that prepared. And he knows how to take advantage of people who don't know the opening. And he, he does just that. I get a worse position for pretty much the entirety of the game. And I am fighting to hold the draw. But let's see how it goes. I kick the knight, play d4, c4, and f4. 
I think to myself, you know what? I don't know this opening. I don't care. I'm going to play the four pawns attack. We have takes, takes. I get the big boy center, and I figure let's try and keep it all together and just, you know, make black feel silly for playing this opening. So we have knight c6, knight f3, bishop pins, bishop defends the pawn on d4. The problem here is that my king... Not happy in the center of the board, and you know, the, the d4 pawn can only have so many defenders on it, and you know, knight c3, bishop e7, and I already don't play the best move. I mean, to be fair, we're 10 moves into the game, I don't know the opening. I should play queen d3, or uh, bishop e2, or even um, king f2, <laughs> shockingly, uh, according to the computer here, but I play queen d2, trying to, you know, see the fact that bishop h4 is coming, I gotta play king d1. I'm not happy at this point. I'm really not. Now, it still says it's only a little bit better for black, but, I mean, this is just not pleasant. The d4 pawn can only have so many defenders, like I said, and if I drop the knight back, then the bishop no longer guards c4, and I figure he's just gonna long castle and barrel down here, and my queen and king are on the same file, so that's not gonna be very good for me, and I, I was too scared here to play king c2 which is the best move, trying to run to safety. I was too scared of knight before. I was scared of this phantom threat. It's a one move one move threat. I didn't like this. I didn't like this because, uh, let's see, why not? Because this pawn is still weak and my king is locking in my rook here. Now I can kick out the knight at any point, hide my king on a2 and get my rook into the game to defend the pawn. Uh, the computer actually gives this line of a4, <laughs> a5, and b3. Crazy. This is insane. c5, knight b5. Defend the pawn like this, and you can't kick the knight out because you've pushed your pawns already. And bishop e7, queen c... Like, this is what the computer said to do. And I... You know... You know... I... You know... that I... 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 I what are you gonna do? I don't have stockfish in my head. So instead, what I do is I play c5, which is a mistake. I play c5 because I want my I want to be able to drop my knight back to e2 if I have to, to defend this pawn without hanging the c4 pawn. And I also thought, you know, I block the d file temporarily to, and, you know, with enough time to play bishop b5 and pin the knight and relieve some of the pressure on the d4 pawn. Now he takes my bishop. The knight is still pinned. You can't take because of this. Uh, oh, shoot. That's check. Queen d4. Uh, well, the knight is pinned. Sorry. <laughs> I had a brain fart there. So it looks like you're hanging your queen, but the uh, the knight is pinned. Anyway, uh, so takes takes and long castles. So I play bishop takes c6. Now this does give up a pawn. It gives up the d4 pawn, but I have some... Well, I don't really. It's plus one or minus one for black. Uh, and they're up a pawn, so it's truly a pawn for, like, nothing. Because my structure is just completely scattered. I've got weaknesses everywhere. And the bishop is really annoying. And I've got a knight versus bishop situation where I've got my pawn stuck on dark squares and a king on c2. Like, this is just not good. It's just straight up, it's just not good. Uh, I thought maybe I have a chance to hold this with some compensation. Uh, you know, because his pawns are doubled here, and he, you know what, you know what, maybe I can hold on. So let's see what happens. I bring my rook over to the open file, and I have this, you know, nice idea, trying to get something like this, fix my structure a little bit, and try and get a knight maybe into, like, f6, or target the, the weakness on f7, right? Something like this. He plays the best move, rook hd8, and here I offer a rook trade. He shouldn't take it, but he does. Oh, he takes it. And then we have bishop back to e7, b4. Okay, h5 attacks my rook, rook e4, holding it together. a5, a3, takes, takes. I don't see a way forward for black. Uh, and so g5, knight, knight b2, the idea is to either play knight c4 or knight, uh, knight, um, yeah, knight c4, knight a5, and try and win this pawn on c6. That was my idea. We have f5. He calculated, he, he spent like five minutes thinking on this move. It's a game 30, right? So it's 30 minute games with five seconds delay. He spends like five or like six minutes thinking about this move. And then I also spend like six minutes calculating this move because it's a four sequence of moves. If on passant, bishop takes, rook e6, bishop b2, king b2, and rook d2 check is the idea, king c3, rook h2. But then I was like, okay, maybe then I have rook g6, then he can defend, 
then maybe I'm holding on. Maybe I can attack this pawn here and then, you know, try and bring my king and maybe I'm holding on. So I, I do accept this. I take on Passant and we fly out these moves very quickly and then check, takes here, defense the pawn, king d3. I'm like, okay, we got to start getting my king over here to try and hold these pawns back, right? And then maybe if I can get these pawns off the board, then maybe this is fine because his pawns are doubled and not going anywhere. So I go here, stopping any pawn advancements uh, for the H pawn. He goes back. I attack this pawn. We trade pawns. And now I'm like, maybe I have a draw. I'm down a pawn, but these pawns suck. And I'm going to stop this pawn. Let's go. So we have this. I sever the connection here, threatening the pawn. So he gives me a check, defends the pawn. I attack the rook. Now here, it's a draw. Here, this is what should happen. But instead, he blunders. And he plays king g6. Rook g6 check. Your rook is hanging. King's got to move you in the rook. He got so mad. When I played rook g5 after like two seconds, he went, no, no, it's so, and he was so mad. Oh man, I was so happy. I, I can't believe that I won that game. I was worse the entire game down upon miserable, trying to hold it together. Uh, and, and I eventually get into this rook end game where I did equalize to a draw and then he just blundered the game. Now, let's quickly go through the last game here. I'm playing a thousand rated opponent. Uh, I play the Karo Khan here and, with a little weird move order of e5. Now, here he didn't know the opening too well, c3, right? And he brings out the, the light squared bishop, which, you know, you put all your pawns on dark squares and you're trading your light squared bishop. Okay, I play c5 and I already I'm like, okay, let's 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 see what's going on here. He thinks he's getting something going with the knight into d6, but like you haven't developed, you haven't castled your king. Like what, what, like this pawn's going to die. So I shut the door, win a tempo on the queen, bring out the knight, win the pawn. I don't care about this because I just get a very nice center. My king can go to, you know, d7, my rook to the open file. And so here I win the pawn, knight in, don't care. Let's attack the knight. Knight takes, queen takes. Yeah, bishop back, castles, castles, and launch the pawns on the queen side. B5, A5, let's go. He attacked back, B3. Now, I don't want to take. I don't I don't really want to take, because that allows some, some stuff, right? So instead, I play F6. We're expanding on both sides of the board here. He takes, takes. Okay, the queen still can't get in. And he plays rook B2, okay? E5. Now, here, you don't want to do this. You don't want to take this because of this. Rook E8. Pins the, pins the bishop to the queen. You can try this, but I just take it. I just take it. Computer says you have to do this, but this is just... Who wants to play this with white, right? <laughs> like d3 and pass pawn, I've got the queen. Like, it's just... I wouldn't want to play this. I mean, to be fair, you have two rooks for the queen, but with the pawns, I mean, I don't know, not pleasant. So, that doesn't happen. Instead, he goes back. I take, okay? And now we pin. Okay, he sidesteps the pin. Now we win a tempo on the queen, and we're getting a knight into d3. Not, I don't do it right away, because uh, I didn't feel the need. Instead, I play queen f5, eyeing that square with my queen as well, and just trying to get some sort of, you know, attack going over on the king side. Now here, I should play knight d3. What I didn't like was this, and I figured I'm losing this pawn, but apparently it's fine, because who cares about that pawn? You're just going to go for the attack, right? You can trade rooks, push the f-pawn up, kick the bishop back, and who cares about this pawn? This is a crazy line that I looked at with the computer. F3. I don't care. You push umbrella pawn. Where's the mate? It's not there. You you allow the queen because it is mate. Yeah. Now, I didn't do that. Instead, I just played it simple. I played queen d3. I'm like, hey, I'm up a pawn. Let's trade queens. He doesn't. Goes back, okay? Push. Yeah. You didn't trade the queens? Okay. I'm gonna push my pawn. Knight c2. Oof. Oof, that's just the knight, the queen, the pawn. Brutal in black's position, or in white's position here. The rook goes over, and the game is over. Play a4. 
Sorry about the random cut here. Uh, my camera stopped recording and I had to start over. So uh, we have a4 just kicking the rook out. Knight takes e3. Now here I should play c2. It's obviously the best move. Uh, because if you go here, then check, and this is just, you know, obviously winning. And if you try to move the rook this way, this rook hangs. And if you try to move the rook, like, here, then same thing, right? So that's obviously the best move. I don't know why I didn't see it. Instead, I just went for this, uh, figuring queen trade. I'm up a pawn, and I'm gonna win. So <laughs> we have this. I sack that pawn to win the A pawn, and I just push, bring my king, defend the rook, bring my rook, check, and he resigned here because there's no way to prevent the rook, uh, rook b1 check and queening on the next move after that. So yeah, very nice last game here to wrap it up. I felt pretty good once I won the pawn, uh, or once he started playing knight a6, uh, <laughs> or knight a3, sorry, knight a3 to b5 and d6, like I was like, yeah, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna win this game because we're gonna take and get the weakness here, we're gonna win that pawn and just have a good time. So yeah, pretty good tournament here. This is my first tournament that I've played in over a year, I think, and and I did pretty well. I'm playing a next or I'm playing a tournament next Sunday, next week, um, a week from today. Hope that goes well. I anticipate that I'm going to lose some games because it's not like a you know themed tournament or anything. It's like a, just a normal tournament, and I expect some pretty strong players to be there. But hey, wish me luck. I'm gonna keep studying, keep reviewing my openings. And yeah, if you made it to the end of this video, it's a fairly long one. I'd like to thank you. I hope you enjoyed the games. Uh, leave a comment below with your thoughts and like and subscribe, of course. Check out one of the videos floating up here and have a great rest of your day.